put it out. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, we read of that occasion when God instructs Saul to go down and completely wipe out the Amalekites. But of course, Saul the king saved Agag the king and uh, the best of the animals for sacrifice. And then Samuel the prophet comes to him and says these words, Tell me, does the Lord really want your sacrifices and offerings? No, he doesn't want your sacrifices. He wants you to obey him. To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. And from this particular incident, we learn that what really delights God is obedience from his people. And obedience, of course, is not something that comes naturally to us. There is something in us because of our fallen nature that is rebellious. We very often rebel against instructions given to us. Put a man behind the wheel of a car and when the sign says 30, there is something in us that rebel against it. And we have to do 40 or even 50 in a 30 mile an hour speed limit. And hence, many of us have points on our driving licenses. Or we've had to go and sit through one of those three hour safety awareness courses. But obedience is effective and brings with it positive results. I remember the late Pastor Teddy Howell saying this of obedience. He said, obedience involves doing what God says without knowing why. It's not always easy, but to be obedient is to do what God says without knowing why. And let me share with you three instances in the New Testament which show us something of the effectiveness of obedience. Can I suggest to you, first of all, obedience is effective in bringing joy. In John's Gospel, chapter 2, we read of Jesus' first recorded miracle. It was that miracle when he turned water into wine. The host found himself in a, a very difficult and embarrassing situation. The wine had run out. But Jesus was there and Jesus gave instructions to fill water jars and then pour from them and the result was great joy because the best of wine came out as the people obeyed his instructions and the guests' hearts were filled with joy. Yes, obedience is doing what God says without knowing why. And obedience is effective in bringing joy to our lives. Secondly, can I suggest to you that obedience is effective in bringing prosperity? In Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, we read uh, uh, Jesus in conversation with Simon Peter and listen to what Luke records for us of the event. When Jesus had finished speaking, he told Simon, Row the boat out uh, into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch of fish. Master, Simon answered, we have worked hard all night and have not caught a thing. But if you tell me to do, I will let down the nets. They did and caught so many fish, fish that their nets began ripping apart. Peter was an experienced fisherman. He had been out all night and caught nothing. And yet here a carpenter from Nazareth tells a fisherman what to do. But obedience is doing what God says without knowing why. And while to Peter it may seem a little bit on the crazy side, because Jesus said it, Peter was obedient. And the result was 
a successful catch of fish. And so may God help us to be obedient and no success in our Christian living. And then the final thing is this. Obedience is effective in bringing power. Luke 24, 49, Jesus told his disciples, I am going to send to you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And the disciples obeyed. They didn't understand, but nevertheless, Jesus said it and they obeyed. And the result was, of course, on that day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon them like tongues of fire and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we read, they went out and shared Jesus on the streets and Peter preached that wonderful uh, sermon and 3,000 souls were saved. Why? Because he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. So God help us to be obedient, although we don't understand why. Have a great day, Paul Bendith.